Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video won't actually be about guitar playing, but most musicians in these times are probably doing a lot of live streams, YouTube videos, you know, trying to get their music out there. So I thought I'd do a little video with some ideas on how to use, you know, tools that you probably have at home, uh, and particularly how to make your live streams and YouTube videos maybe sound just a little bit better using some of those tools. So let me put this guitar away and we'll get started. So let's begin. I want to start out by saying this video is probably geared towards musicians who have some gear already, maybe an audio interface, some microphones, maybe a mixing board, uh, and know how to use them, you know, some basics of audio engineering. Now, having said that, if you're a beginner, still feel free to watch along. It might inspire you for ideas to put together your own gear and learn how to use it. So. I want to talk about three possible setups that we could use uh, using some of these tools. So the first setup I'm going to talk about is using obviously a camera of some sort, an audio interface, a computer uh, with some DAW software installed on it, and some streaming software if you're using um, this for a live stream. So let's get started with the first setup. So for your webcam, I mean, you can use pretty much anything. You know, Zoom makes some great recorders that have a camera and pretty decent microphones on them. Um, for this video, I'm just using my iPhone. I couldn't find a webcam in these crazy times anywhere, so I just used what I had. Now, I found this cool little app I mentioned in my previous video uh, called Epoch Cam. Uh, so I'm using it here. Uh, you can blow it up full screen. So there you go, that's how I'm capturing the video. And I'm using some other software called OBS, which is streaming software, just to capture the screen here. You can see there I'm capturing the screen. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the sound, which is kind of the more interesting part for me, you know, as a musician and audio engineer. So I'm obviously using an audio interface and a microphone to capture the sound. It's going to have better sound than what, you know, the microphone in my iPhone is. So... Uh, you could use any audio interface. I have this little Zoom H6 uh, portable recorder. It can also be used as an audio interface, so this is, would be a great solution. Probably some of you have maybe a little two-channel audio interface kicking around. That would work perfectly. For this video, I'm using my <clears throat> dedicated Lynx Aurora, which is uh, in my rack because I'm in the studio. I also have a digital mixer, uh, a Tascam DM3200. It's an older mixer, but still works great. And I'm going to demonstrate that for setups two and three later on in this video. Let's talk about the computer. So you do need a computer to capture the audio stream and the video stream. But really any kind of modern-ish computer should be able to do the job, as long as it's powerful enough to handle the audio stream and the video stream. I'm using a 2010 Mac Pro 5.1. Now it's pretty beefed up with all the upgrades you could do to them, but it's still an old computer. It's still doing the job. Let's talk about software. As you can see on my screen here, I have some DAW software running. I'm using Motu's Digital Performer, but you could use any DAW. I have Pro Tools as well, could use that. If you prefer Reaper, Logic, Cubase, probably even GarageBand could do the job. Um, as you can see, I'm actually recording my audio into the DAW at the moment with this microphone but I'm also sending it out of the DAW software, which is kind of the interesting part for live streams. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So I have the microphone, and you could use any sources, by the way. You could use a mic. You could use DI'd instruments, like an acoustic guitar or a keyboard. You could use virtual instruments from within your DAW, you know, trigger them with a MIDI keyboard. Anything that you could think of that in the DAW you could use, you could send it to your stream. So the way I have things routed right now, I have the microphone coming in on the first channel of my audio interface here. But you'll notice I, ha I have it muted. I'm not listening to the sound right now in the DAW, but it is being sent out of the DAW to the streaming software. If I move OBS over here, the moment you can see the audio coming out is then going in to my streaming software. So there's a little bit of a trick to do this. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy Mike De Pasquale who pointed me to this software. So it's a little software package called Soundflower. And what it allows you to do is you install it and it will show up like, uh, like an audio interface essentially in your DAW software. And you can route audio to those channels, say via a bus or a send. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I have the mic input here on channel one. And then I've sent a send on a bus 
over to an aux track, which is also has its input on the same bus. And then I'm sending it out, streaming to Soundflower here. And then I've got the input on the streaming software set to Soundflower as well. And that's how I'm getting it over there. Now, the problem, um, you know, with using some DAW software and running audio through it is latency. If you're lucky enough to have an audio interface like a Universal Audio Apollo, some of the modern Motu interfaces, um, some of the Antelope interfaces, Slate interfaces that have built-in DSP, you're in a good position because you could basically just set up a send on your master two bus out uh, and pretty much play latency free through those DSP uh, on your interface. Or you could use the mixer for your interface and plop those uh, plugins in there and use those. I have an older interface, so I have to deal with latency in a different way. How I'm doing that is I'm actually monitoring my microphone with my Lynx's dedicated mixer, and we call this a direct hardware playthrough. So I'm using my Lynx input one, which is my microphone, and uh, I can monitor it here latency free straight to my headphones. So I'm not hearing any latency from the DAW. Latency is the time that it takes the signal to go into the software, get processed and come back out. And it can be a real problem, especially for singers. Uh, if you've ever tried to sing through your DAW, um, it just sounds weird and it can mess with your pitch. It can mess with your timing. It can just really throw you off. So you usually want to monitor with a direct hardware playthrough or if you have an interface that has DSP, you can monitor through those plugs. Um, for the most part, though, I don't really need to necessarily hear all of the processing I'm doing. I'm doing some gentle processing on this mic channel. I'm doing a little bit of compression here, a little bit of gentle EQ. I don't necessarily to hear, need to hear that for performance purposes. Though most singers, for example, will like to monitor with a little bit of reverb. And I can do that simply by set, setting the reverb up over here on a bus and just using a pre-fader send. I've, I've got the actual mic track muted, but using a pre-fader send, I can dial up some reverb. And really the latency isn't that much of an issue. We're usually using a bit of pre-delay in a reverb plugin anyway, so it, it's perfectly fine. Um, yeah. Let's set up a virtual instrument. So I have a piano here uh, on contact. I'm going to show you that. Let's record enable that. Oops, pull it up here. So now I could play live into the DAW. There we go. Close that off. Now again, another way to fight latency is keeping your buffer size, you know, smaller. So I'm running my buffer size here at about 256. The latency is okay. Um, mostly not noticeable. You could run smaller buffer sizes if your computer will hack it. Uh, like 128 is pretty good. 64 would be even better. Uh, it just depends on your computer and how hard you can push it. So another thing you could do, for example, if you have an electric guitar, like at the beginning of this video, I used some amp sim software and I just used a DI off that electric guitar and I just ran it through this uh, virtual amp that I had set up. I'm using Slate's version of THU Overloud. Set up a little Fender amp in here with a couple stomp boxes and you're off to the races. As long as you keep the latency low, um, you should be okay. Latency can be a bit of a bummer, but keep your buffer sizes low. Watch out for putting latency uh, heavy plugins on any auxiliary tracks. They can actually up your latency. You'll notice I have a ozone here on my bus out to Soundflower. I'm just using it as a limiter. And I made sure that I chose an algorithm that doesn't involve look ahead. I'm just using IRC1 here. So the latency that's added isn't too bad. Uh, anyways, these are some ways that you could take advantage of your DAW to enhance your audio on the way out to your live stream. So I think uh, I want to move on now to setup number two. And I'm just going to pause for a moment and reset up for that. Okay, so for setup two, 
what we're going to do is, you know, many musicians may have a mixer kicking around. They use for, you know, live shows or maybe rehearsals, whatever the case may be. Maybe you have a little four channel mixer. Maybe you have something larger like this or a Behringer X32, whatever it is that you might have. Um, so for this setup, I'm going to keep it simple. And we're just simply going to route the master outs or the main left and right outputs of the mixer into my audio interface. Now, what's great about this setup is you could do all the processing on the mixer itself. So, you know, compression, EQ, reverbs, delays, all basically in real time with no latency. So it's a really great option for processing your audio, being able to hear all that in real time. So what I've got set up currently is I have the microphone set up on input strip one here. I do have a little bit of EQ and compression applied to it. It may sound a little different than the audio um, earlier in this video because I was running it through the DAW. So the processing in this case is being done on the mixer. And then it's simply assigned to the main outputs. You can see it's outputting here. And that is fed uh, into my Lynx Aurora. So I'm going to change the screen over here. Here's Digital Performer. You can see I'm recording the stereo bus of the DM3200. Let's look at the mixing board. Now the way that I did it is my console has a digital output and I simply routed the digital output of my console into some digital inputs on my Lynx Aurora. But if you have an analog console, you could still just take the left and right analog outs and just make sure you run those into line level inputs on your audio interface. Line level is the key. So if you're using something like this uh, H6, you know, if you just plug XLRs into here, they're likely by default going to be set to mic level. On the H6, you would make sure you engage the pads. Uh, the reason is the output of a mixing console is much stronger than the output of, say, a microphone, which is very weak. So just make sure that you plug those into line level inputs on your audio interface to prevent um, distorting the inputs. Okay, so now I'm doing everything else pretty much the way that I did it with my first setup. So here's the inputs of the two bus out of my DM3200 and it's being bussed over to an aux track which is output to Soundflower. And if I drag my streaming software out here, you can see, so the DM3200 is now feeding the stream. So for a live stream, this would work really well. And just for example, uh, I'm going to dial up some effects uh, on the DM3200 just so you can hear what that might sound like. First, we'll start with a little bit of reverb here. Two, 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 two. So I got a nice short little reverb time set up. You can even dial in some delay on that. Two, 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 one. A little slap delay. Uh, and again, all latency free, you can monitor it in real time. Let's turn that off now. So this is a really great way where you could, um, you know, feed your band into here. Again, DI'd instruments, multiple microphones, and I could still feed, uh, for example, if I record enabled my piano here. <laughs> I could still play virtual instruments from the DAW. So there's there's a lot of ways you could make that work. Um, for the next setup, it's going to be similar. I'm going to use a mixer as well. But maybe for a YouTube video, you might want to capture all of the microphone channels uh, instead of just the two bus out. Uh, so that's a little bit more of a complex setup. I'm just going to pause for a moment, set that up, and we'll explain that. So give me one moment. So setup three is very similar to what I had for setup two. I just decided that I wanted to capture the independent channels of the mixing board to their own tracks on my DAW. This allows for possibilities for mix down if you're doing a YouTube video, but also allows you different possibilities for sending different things to Soundflower if you're doing a live stream. So you can see I'm recording the direct mic signal here. I'm recording the mic signal with some post effects here. So a little bit of compression and EQ. You can see it's a little bit hotter coming in here. And I also have the effects uh, bus of the console routed here. So if I dial up some reverb, 212, you can now see it's coming in and being recorded. Let's turn that back off. Let's look at the mixing board view here in Digital Performer. 
So one thing I had to do differently is in the setup for Digital Performer, I did have to choose a different audio interface. Instead of the Lynx Aurora, I have now chosen the Tascam's Firewire card as the audio interface. Here's how you choose the audio interfaces uh, in the setup for D DP. Here you can see I've chosen the Firewire card of the Tascam and Soundflower. Or if I'm using the Lynx Aurora, I could use the Lynx Aurora and Soundflower. We'll go back here to the Tascam Firewire card and Soundflower. So again, I've bust the post effects mic strip over to Soundflower and I've bust over the effects as well. So if I dial it up, it's certainly being sent out. And the cool thing is, let's turn that back off. With these sends, you can dial up a custom mix into Soundflower. You could, you know, do a test recording just to make sure the balances are the way that you like. Uh, and you can even do further post-processing, you know, by putting something on your your two bus here that's being sent to the stream. If you want to fatten it up with, say, a tape emulation. I've got Ozone on here. You could do a little bit of pre-mastering if you wanted to. Obviously, just be careful of latency. Uh, in the streaming software itself, OBS, it has some settings for latency. Uh, with live streams, you just want to make sure that you do a test live stream and make sure that the audio is indeed lining up to the picture, you know, so that lips match for people who are singing. And if you have someone drumming, the, the drum hits match. Uh, so just be careful of that. But this approach would give you the flexibility in a live stream to dial up whatever kind of custom mix you wanted that was even separate from the mix that you're listening to on your mixer, as well as capturing all the tracks in your DAW for possible post work. If you want to remix something, you've got all the independent tracks, uh, pre-fader, pre-FX, and post-fader, post-FX, and you can have the effects from your console separate or choose effects in your DAW maybe. So there's just a ton of possibilities. Now, I know this is a little bit complex if you've never worked with the gear before. That's why I said earlier in the video, probably, hopefully, you've had some experience with a DAW, with a mixing board, and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to wrap up here just by saying those are three ways that you could get, you know, different input sources like microphones, DI'd instruments, mic'd instruments, virtual instruments triggered via a MIDI keyboard directly into your live stream. So... Uh, recap here, you could do it straight into your audio interface and just send it that way. You could do it into a mixer and just send the main outs of your mixer to your audio interface. Or if you have a mixer that has an audio interface, you could simply send all the independent channels uh, to your DAW and output it to your streaming software as well. So having said that, uh, I hope that this video will help give you some ideas for setting up your own live streams and, you know, working on getting better audio. If you have questions on anything that I've covered here in this video, feel free to shoot a comment down below or fire me a message. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Uh, I'll leave links about all the software and all the hardware that I'm using in this video in the description below. Now, if you like this video, feel free to give me a like, subscribe, all the good stuff you do here on YouTube. If you disliked it, eh, you know what to do. All good. <laughs> Anyways, take care. I hope to uh, have some musical videos coming out soon. Take care, everyone.